Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be seeing what would happen if the People's Republic of China had a civil war today. If all their, I think states is what I'd assume what these are, but yes, if all their states broke away. Let's find out. Can't see. It's bright. Alright, so obviously we're going to be having the two sides. And it's going to start out, so this is where their capital is, right? So this is where their actual government would be, right? Yes. So, they're f f first they're going to want to get control of all the land and whatever they got here. Um, obviously, it's going to be pretty easy. Is This would make them have all the troops and everything, and they'd easily just obliterate these guys and... So since this is a war, it's really just going to be full annexation after full annexation because they're trying to restore their, uh, or the restore their country. And then we'll have the democratic side or democracies over here. And then, you know, so maybe, and you know what, actually no, these are going to be the monarchists. So, uh, really quick, uh, on that note, um, no, they're kind of just going to, uh, honestly, IRL, they don't have that many people, so they just, you know, unite as so, just kind of, uh, say, hey, you want to make a joint monarchist government, and our, and our king and queen can be from, queen from one country and king from the other, they're, and they're, and the one, and they're both like, yeah, let's do that, um, uh, the People's Republic over here is going to go full militaristic. In fact, they're even going to get kind of coalition uh, on them because of the expanding. But they're going to pretty easily. They were going going to. They had troops around both because they knew that these two states have been friends and you know kind of already. They go ahead and cut this guy into two, start invading now, and you know one after another. Surrender, surrender, and surrender, even though, just because they took out their coastal areas. And, of course, full annexation. That's what everything's going to be here. Especially with the People's Republic side. Now, if they do go into a war, joint war, and they both declare war, well, then it'll be split up. Or if a, one gets declared war on by a lot of people, it'll be split up. But uh, you can guess that, oh my gosh, they have max conscription here. Crazy stuff. Now another party that's going to form out here is democracies. These guys are all democracies over here. And then down here is the not so good, let's just say fascists. These guys, these two. As in fact, they're going to go ahead and go back to their warlord status, which was, oh, it's in hoi form, I think. Anyways, they're down here in, you know, I should have I should have had Taiwan on this map, but I was like, eh, I said People's Republic of China Civil War, so I was like, eh, Taiwan's not, I guess, not a part of China, or well, that's what most of the world says, it's not a part of China, and then China says it is, so I could have added it, but, you know, so they form, and then they're like, they send a referendum to all, most of their neighbors, most of these guys, and they're like, this guy's like, uh, I guess so, right, and then... All the guys are like, heck no, and they're like, we're gonna, if you declare one of us, we all declare one of you, especially this big guy. These guys over here, they're the peaceful guys, and just kind of work on liberating so much, or I guess you could say liberating, but what, what they say is annexing, even though they, they say, they go up to a country, and they're like, alright, so what we're gonna do is, it's either we militarily take you, or... We free you from the People's Republic and uh, and all the fascists and stuff, and you can go ahead and join us. Uh, quickly, first thing that happens is they go ahead and they're going to form an alliance with someone. And this is going to be the Yellow Entente, and it's with these guys. They're saying, hey, we don't want to be with you. And these all these guys go ahead and join, and this guy. Say we're forming against the People's Republic. They declare war on us, we declare war on them. Then another one's formed, right? Remember I said, you declare on us, they'll declare war on you? Well, here we are. 
these guys decide to stay out of it this time, but this one does join. This state joins. Don't get mad at me if I don't pronounce the state correctly. Now, they send a refer referendum here, and these guys say, Oh, frick you. And they say, Well, you're gonna get taken by force now. Uh, People's Republic's just going to be like that because they're always going to be at war and that's how it's going to be. They quickly encircled their capital, which weirdly enough was placed right here in this populated place. I mean, to be fair, the population's not really out here. And their allies give military access, but they are not at war with this guy because they're like, it's not worth getting everyone mad and tension going up, right? But most likely, in a real, they, so, they surrender, but most likely in a real scenario, outside powers would be helping the civil, all the, like, peoples ri help rise up against the people's republic, which is, they're ri helping rise up against them. They're like, the, like most of the western powers. Maybe Russia would be supporting China, uh... North Korea, but then North Korea would probably get embargoed by, like, U.S., South Korea, all those guys. So it really wouldn't matter that much. Um, North Korea can't really support them that much, because China already has way more stuff, even if they did break apart than North Korea. Uh, China says, um, uh, kind of want to form our own alliance, and if you don't join it up here, you're kind of, uh, wrong color. We ain't using the new color. We're going to create this protection league, even though it's literally an annexation league. And all the guys around it are forced to join it because, well, you know, you're kind of forced to. Um, now, it's really just a fight uh, around, all around, you know. This is like influence map more, is what I see uh, it as. And... These guys down here are going to go ahead and create their own league, even though it probably wouldn't work. Um, they go ahead and create it, and they get these guys out here, this island, and they even get someone to flip, and it's these guys that are kind of neutral. I mean, even though they're joining a fascist league. Um, let's see, what would start? Uh, probably with Communist China, or People's Republic, right? They're the People's Republic. Um, they would say, uh, everybody you have to call and you didn't read the paper folio, even though I told you that it wouldn't happen. Uh, orange team, let's go. They even are thinking about declaring war here, but they're like, nah, we're good. Which could be a mistake, aka, they're ever, all these guys are building up a lot right here to go get six minutes, but, uh, never mind. Don't worry about it. Well, quickly... The blue guys were ready for this, so... Well, blue guys were ready for this, so they start invading quickly right here. Just cut them off and all that. Also, they decide not to invade this. They're also building up right here with that, so... Big mistake, but they'll find out later. Then they were all building up right here to cut off supply lines and kind of isolate these guys over here that are the main power, actually. Even though they're not in the population area, they actually are the main power because of all the manufacturing. And they surrender, um, making this guy surrender because they got cut off and then they can't have anything to swap. These guys do because they kind of need these guys. And well, they start cutting these guys in part. And the militaries, all their militaries are up there. And, you know, nothing really goes good when you're fighting these guys because they boom, boom. It's over. Now China would say, let's let's have everyone annex with they're like, uh, sorry guys, uh, y'all don't get to have this. This is part of me, allies. Even though I use you, uh, you're kind of going to become a part of me soon here. And now uh, they figure this out by China annexing or drawing in the peace conference. Uh, a border that looks like this. And they're like, uh, hey, that was your ally. And they're like, I know. Now everyone's like, oh, so why did we join you again? And they're like, I don't know. And then they're like, well, you kind of were forced to because, one, you're communist and I'm way stronger than all you guys. And they're like, oh, yeah. But why'd you annex one of our friends? And, she's, he's a, and communist China is like, or Xi Jinping is like, because we're powerful. 
going to go ahead and start annexing all these guys now. The, mainly the this warlord that was questioning everything. Same with this warlord was also questioning like everything that they were saying. So just remember, this is communist China. And this is also a part of communist China. So really it's going to look something like this. This is just so they, they said. We're just connecting our lands, bro. And their entire allies are like, are we next? And like, absolutely n So they thought that China said no. And they're like, China's like, well, we didn't say okay. They, didn't, they also didn't say they don't want it to happen. So we'll keep them in our lands for a little longer. Just to make it look like we're peaceful. Now, yellow guys are willing to split China among themselves and they're like all right so basically what's going to happen is we all unite as a union we all become a union here first actually uh, we become two separate unions one western right one western a western union and an eastern or northeastern union and everyone's like now the yellow team's like, wait, well, we don't, and they're like, too bad, we're the major powers, no, they actually are like, okay, blah, 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 whatever, we won't have our civilians rise up, we'll make sure they don't, we'll just propaganda all over that, they're still under this country, and then they'll eventually find out and be happy, but, um, of course, we're out of Mongolia, their plan is technically to join Mongolia, but since Mongolia's not on this map, it ain't happening, but not yet. Also, like this video and subscribe if you guys want to see uh, continent battle royales. And I can even maybe do a China battle royale in Hoi 4. We'll figure out that. We'll figure that out. But this, all of a sudden, this yellow alliance is very looking, like, strong and looking like they want to take everything out. Even though, literally, that's just the People's Republic saying that they're going to take everything out. So they should join the People's Republic. Uh, that would be no. Oh, uh, the fascist people, everyone has to enlist in the army, and if you don't, you get beat by the people that were already in the army. So, mm, it's kind of not worth it. Um, here's what happens. The war, communist China, goes ahead and declares war. Expecting to just invade right here. But you know what they don't expect is a secondary invasion from here. The yellow team. So now it really is an all-out civil war. But, let's just be honest. It's really a war against the blue guys, but these, you know, the yellow team's gonna be like, Yeah, we said we weren't gonna do that, but we're kinda gonna move into your China. Um, the yellow guys are just gonna stay peaceful really quick. And just, they're, what they're doing is building up. And, well, China's busy find China I guess these are the guys the yellow team that are wanting independence and you know like maybe splitting China um and freeing the population you could say um these guys down here are standing no chance because their entire army's up here invading trying to get to Beijing Beijing Ching I oh, don't know I don't think I'm allowed to say that, but I will. And no one expected this, not even communist China, and even though they should have military all over their borders, they do not. And what you're going to notice is um, Purple Team is mobilized and ready and takes out Beijing because there's no military there besides maybe the National Guard, right? So they're like, all right, blue team armistice. And so the blue team won't fight them for now. Communist China swiftly taken this part out. Um, the capital's right here. So really, and they're getting rebellions all around because they're by Myanmar. Um, China, these troops don't even know that they're at war with these guys. And it's kind of a downfall because that'll kill you. Very much so. Um, 
They don't realize the rapid advances that everyone's making. And they just set up a border fortification right there. But what they don't realize is purple team's coming in right behind them and kind of saying, yeah, we kind of just encircled you guys. You might want to just give up. And purple team's making the most gains here. Obviously, that makes sense. But the blue team's still in this, and somehow, somehow it's still in this. That's the big thing. Somehow, it's still in this. But uh, they uh, take this out really quick and say, yeah, it's mine. They push out. Well, not push in. No. They push out to take as much as they can. You know, they actually get our military acceptance through here. And basically, this guy's not even fascist. He's actually a democracy. And... Uh, they just joined the fascists, saying that they're fascists, and this guy's a democracy suits too, so kind of just flipped a democracy because these guys are a uh, purple team. Go and take some over. Just says, yeah, you're mine now. Look at this. Look at this. All this land and waters all purple soon, right? <laughs> so the democracies and the monarchies are taking down the communists. I feel like I've heard that before. Hmm. Weird. So now, uh, communist China is holding out here and says, you guys are going to flip and make, and you're going to be a part of our, my country. And they're like, no. And they're like, yeah, you are. And so, for this, uh, you're going to have to become. And they're like, gosh, dang, bro. Say, surrender to purple. And then these guys go ahead and give up their military gain land. And they surrender to purple because they were going to fight. But they were like, is it really worth it? So, let me draw up this peace treaty and show you what may happen. Well, the, basically, let's just say, as communist China, you uh, kind of messed up by putting all your troops down here. That, uh, you forgot to fuck some up here, but let's draw this peace treaty and I'll be right back. And, okay, here we are. So this is what the borders will look like. And I know it's kind of bad borders, right? Like, it's like, they're kind of curvy and, you know. But, the, most likely, this part will go to Mongolia eventually. Maybe this part goes away and whatever out of Mongolia just goes to Mongolia. But, all right, y'all are probably yelling at me, you're like, why is this video so short, blah, 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 Well, it's not. You see how these guys are blue? Well, let's just say they may have left some communist r political people alive, and let's just say they're revolting and, you know, kind of got to redo this and do this. Now, their, their pact has been broken because, let's just say, they're a part of Mongolia right now. So, Mongolia's getting risen up against and is just trying not, did not assimilate this area that well. In fact, just everything goes bad for them inf until, unless, except, sorry, I'm messing up on the words. Wow. Um, everything goes good except in outer Mongolia where it actually holds and they don't get the resistance. Now, these guys down here are like, oh, I wonder how my friends are doing. Let's send some diplomats over here. Um, they say, well, I can't answer right now. In war. And they're like, what war would they be in? And before they even know, they're split into two parties that sign an armistice and decide to, let's just say, take out these guys who have been working on assimilating everything and actually are assimilating everything now this map looks completely unfair right but these guys only get like 10 percent population conscription 95 percent conscription and actually 90 percent conscription and the rest go to uh the the f factories so kind of going to be a gangbang at first. Uh, yeah, Orange starts moving out pretty fast. These guys start going towards their old capital, Beijing. In fact, they surround the entire thing, saying, uh, this is rightfully ours. Um, 
they go and pop that this off. And there's still resistance here, so kind of take that up. And Beijing's taken. Um, they cannot really push that far, except Orange is making gains where, like, well, all these guys are. Both of these parties are communist, but the difference is they're different communist. They, I don't know. One is, like, you know, Soviet communist, and one's the Chinese communist. Um, they, the deal to split like this, and then keep running down a river or whatever, but, then, you know, it's communist, so, uh, communism, so who's gonna really follow that, right? No, the answer is no one. They keep going down the coastline, because all their man are in garrisons and helping us simulate and being nice and so they're getting taken over they finally conscript all the guys from down here and all this stuff's can happening and they're just not doing this and then they try to then they get so far in fact they even almost reached the core territories but this is kind of sad right like only getting this far while no one's mobilized yeah, it kind of was sad because they're going to quickly push around this Mongol part. Say Mongolia is still in the Civil War. So Mongolia is still part of the Civil War, right? So they're still up here fighting against these guys. So half, at least a quarter of their troops are up here fighting against Mongolia. Mongolia might not have that many people, but they probably have asked everyone to join the army. And they probably all have not wanting to get taken over. By China. Um, China says, uh, withdraws all of its troops for some reason. Both of them. They both unite under the, not red, orange banner. Go to take out the people in Mongolia. So, right, pretend like they're all up here, you know, they're fighting, doing whatever they can. And while they do that, these guys from down south decide, hey, we're going to kind of sneak in and start snaking to their, towards their capital. And they make a spearhead. And their capital's like right, right here. And they make a spearhead again. And no troops are here except garrisons that are like, uh, our country isn't giving us any orders, right? So we don't got to do anything. And yes, it does look like this is just a complete blue domination but it's because of peace and they cut this part off that says oh, you freed us and boom boom surrender that fast it did seem like well you know what was going to happen but these guys go ahead and say alright you're released back in and peace lasts in China ta-da and this is what happens if China went to a civil war. Let's just uh, draw what the thumbnail would look like, right? Or draw what the what it is. Um, this is Mon Mongolia and uh, what would a monarchist China be called? Not Republic of China. They would be friends with Taiwan. Maybe you'd cede some land to Taiwan, like maybe around this land of Taiwan or something. We'd find out, but we'll call this Tai Betten Tai. M. Tie M. Tibetan Empire. Tibetan Empire. And they hold peaceful relations till the very last days of their dynasty. As we can see. Well. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys next time.